Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. It has been a tumultuous year for Unpost. Its financial difficulties were thrown into the public domain amid statements it was struggling to pay wage bills. While six months on and the removal of the price cap, together with new service offerings, seems to have placed the organisation on a more sustainable footing. Joining me now to discuss this period of restructuring is the Head of Corporate Communications with Unpost, Anna McHugh. Anna, as I've mentioned, earlier this year Unpost was making the national headlines. But has the removal of the cap on the price of postage alleviated the financial burden for Unpost in any meaningful way? It's brought us some time, Carl. You know, our industry is changing rapidly. And uh, as is happening all over the world, traditional letter mail is in serious and rapid decline. Yes, the price cap, our prices were way, way below cost. We were losing, we lost 15 million euro in 2016. And really, the universal letter service where we deliver, um, you know, to every address every working day and collect in every part of the country was at serious risk, such were the losses, just not sustainable. Our prices had fallen way behind the European averages. And um, as a small island, you know, with a, a rel- compared to Europe, a relatively small population, even though we're growing, it just isn't sustainable. So... We had to get our prices right and, you know, secure the service and we've bought ourselves some time, but we have big changes to make. And while the sizeable price hikes have been widely criticised by the business community, are we likely to see further increases in the cost of postage in the foreseeable future? Well, look, nobody likes price increases. I mean, you'd love to be, you know, decreasing your price um, if you were able to sustain the business. But it's all about ensuring that the, that the service and the quality of service that we need and that the economy needs that we can continue to provide it. In every business, you know, price is something you look at on a regular basis and it'll be no different within the postal industry. Anna, our listeners will not have escaped on Post's newest advertising campaign, promoting its latest service, Address Pal. Is Address Pal and how does it work? We've had to change. We've had to, you know, look at what parts of the business are growing and how we can improve our revenue streams. And parcels and online shopping is on the up, up, up. There's no doubt about that. You know, more than half of Irish adults shop online every month. And uh, we expect that the amount being spent on online shopping is going to, you know, quadruple over the next couple of years. Um, And, you know, that's happening globally and all the signs are there. Your listeners will be familiar if they shop online at being online, looking at websites, finding the very thing they want, possibly on a UK or US website, only to find that they don't deliver to Ireland. Or in other cases, they'll deliver to you in Ireland, but they will charge you very hefty shipping fees. So we have developed Address Pal, which gives our Irish customers their very own unique UK or US address that they can use when they're shopping on those sites. Um, So their shopping will go off to um, that address in the US and then we will ship it onwards to Ireland for them. Uh, In the case of the UK, they can have it delivered to their local post office, maybe near home, near work, near the creche, wherever is handy. And in the case of the US, it will be delivered to to your address. And from on Post's insights, is clothing the most popular purchase from both the US and the UK? Yeah, the top item, if you like, for online shopping is fashion of all kinds. Now, that could be sports gear or, you know, uh, fashion gear, um, you know, occasional dresses, whatever. So fashion is number one. Um, and then rapidly followed by beauty, beauty um, items, cosmetics and gadgets, gizmos, games. You know, people are so into their gaming now, um, followed by books and stationery and the like. Fashion is certainly number one. And will all the packages coming in from the US be scanned by customs and irrelevant import duties be applied? From the US, it's the same as any other items coming in, whether they come in through Address Pal or come in through the regular service through us or indeed any of the of the courier companies. Um, you know, there is a, a permanent uh, customs presence in our mail centres and you have to expect that, uh, that you know, that they will be inspected um, on arrival. This isn't, isn't a sneaky way around the customs. If there is duty payable on items from uh, the US 
and, and those duties and taxes can vary hugely depending on the item, the value, all sorts of things. If there is something payable, you'll pay it when it's delivered to you. You'll pay the postman or postwoman when they, when they bring it to your door. And how long does it usually take to have a parcel shipped from either the UK or the US using Address Pal? Yeah, you'd add on a, you know, a couple of extra days. By the time you'll get a notification when in the case of the U, U actually in both cases, when they arrive into that, your proxy as we call it, your own unique address in either the US or the UK, you'll get a notification to say that it has arrived there. In the case of the UK, it tends to be here within two to three days. Um, in the t- case of the US, the turnaround could be a little bit longer, three, four days. Um, we'd say leave plenty of time. And dare I say, uh, as, we, as in the lead up to Christmas, the Christmas online shopping has started already, Carl, uh, believe it or not. Mm. Um, you know, leave plenty of time. Anna, online retailing is already having a major negative effect on our local brick and mortar retailers. Now, this new service being introduced by OnPost has the potential to damage our high street retailers even further. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Look, as I said, Irish people are shopping online. It's like holding back the tide. But And there's huge outward opportunities for Irish retailers as well to go online and, you know, to market themselves and their goods to the market outside of Ireland. Um, Mind you, I would say that on the domestic side, we're also um, at the moment just about to pilot a service for local retailers. Uh, We're going to be piloting piloting it in three places in Ireland. And that's an opportunity for those local high street stores to go online and have their items delivered by the local on post delivery staff within their vicinity or indeed anywhere in Ireland at the next working day. So they could be local fine food shops or clothes shops or any kind of stores and we're working with them, providing them with a website and a delivery service, including a chilled delivery service for chilled goods. So we're very excited about that. That's a way of encouraging, you know, our domestic small businesses, startups and just local stores. There, in relation to online shopping, look, globally, it's it's just on the rise and you're not going to hold back the tide and we're very adamant that, you know, we want our share of that market. And I'm interested to find out what feedback has Unpost received from both Retail Ireland and Retail Excellence Ireland in relation to Address Pal. I can't recall exactly those the, the, the exact words uh, from, from, from those entities. I know customers are, have registered. We must be up to about 140,000 registered customers now. Mm. And that's who we take our feedback from. They're happy customers. They're repeat customers. And um, it's, it's, it's basically using the strengths that we have um, you know, to better service customers. And uh, we work with all the industry bodies. Obviously, you know, bodies representing Irish companies will have a particular um, a particular uh, viewpoint or in line. We're not at war with anybody. We're basically in business like everybody else. And we're, we're trying to look after our customers. If we don't provide these services, our competitors will. Hot on the heels of Address Pal, just this week, Unpost announced that it is launching a new service called Return Pal. What is the idea behind this service and how does it work? Well, as online shoppers will know, it's great finding the thing you want online and having it delivered and then you open it and you find, uh-oh, it's not quite exactly as I had expected or the colour isn't right, the size isn't quite right. I need to send it back. And that's where the hassle begins. It can be real hassle, time-consuming. And there's all sorts of hodgepodge options out there depending on the e-tailer um, of dropping it off or printing off labels and doing all those kind of things. So we have developed a world first in Return Pal, which is an app to take all the hassle out of returning unwanted online shopping in within Ireland or to the UK. Um, it's a really simple app. You register and you're given a number of options and your local postman or woman will come and collect it on their next, when they're next doing the rounds, the next working day, they'll come and pick it up from you. You can even, you don't even have to be at home. You can tell them it'll be in the porch, it'll be on the back windowsill. You can tell them where you want them to pick it up from and they will even bring the labels with them and label it up. You just leave it nicely, securely parceled and we'll stick on the labels and get it back to that e-tailer for you. Or you can leave it, drop it off in the local post office, whatever suits you. In some, in some cases, the retailer will be paying for that free return. In other cases, the customer will have to pay. 
Now that service is currently available for returns within Ireland and the UK, but how long before this service will be extended into the US market? Your listeners will have seen the ads for it just in recent weeks and uh, it's really, you know, in its start-off phase, we're only getting going with it. A bit like AddressPal, we're starting with Ireland and the UK and we certainly will look at extending it further. Can't say exactly, maybe some time next year. And finally, Anna, we know that there's major restructuring taking place on Unpost at present, but what will this ultimately mean for both staff and customers? There is most certainly is major restructuring. The business is changing. The digital world is having a huge impact on our business. Um, in, in, you know, the tide is going out on traditional letters and increasingly as well on cash payments, which are fairly central to the work and to the services in, in the post office network. And um, as we can see with, with contactless payments and, and electronic payments, you know, that world is changing rapidly. And um, in order to survive and to have a, a business, a strong business in the future, we're completely restructuring the company into from one big company into two dedicated co- companies, one for retail and one for mail. So that's the letters and parcels. And, uh, and we're downsizing too. Now, we have been downsizing steadily over the last eight years um, every year. As the business has been changing, you know, let the traditional letter volumes are down almost 50% since 2007. That's a lot of letters gone out of the system. And we have to cut our cloth accordingly. So, yes, we will be a leaner company. We will be a smaller company. But we're determined we're going to compete. You know, all the big multinationals are here. We want to be a, a, a strong employer. We want to be a good employer and have a real future, not just for our own direct staff, but also for our postmasters who, who run so many of, of the local post offices. There's no doubt there will be fewer post offices, but we want them to be stronger. We want them to be in every community over 500 people and, you know, to make sure that they have a long term future, that we don't put a sticking plaster on something that's going to be a problem in a couple of years. We want to we have an opportunity with this restructuring really to get it right. And um, to, as I said, to ensure our future, which is financial services as the most trusted company in Ireland, we have huge opportunity to develop into financial services and into more and more, you know, modern mail services. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.